Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's time for episode number two of season four of Better Call Saul. Now in episode one, right there at the end, when Howard was basically saying that it was all his fault and he believes that Chuck committed suicide and it was because of Howard's actions against him, we saw Jimmy with that little bit of a smile and a little bit of upbeat in his attitude or upturn in his attitude and he's going over and feeding the fish and just acting like maybe he's happy or something something is going on there in his mind that maybe he feels like he is absolved from his own feeling of responsibility for what happened to Chuck because Jimmy really did help push things in that direction if not on purpose then at least inadvertently with what he did with the insurance company and putting that bug in their ear that there was something wrong with Chuck and that they need to look into it. He didn't say that, of course, but he he put the bug in their ear so that they would start looking at it. And that basically let, started the series of events that started Chuck on his, on his reversal of his progress that he was having with his issues or his condition. And of course... That led to what Howard did, which led to what Chuck did. So I'm, I'm wondering if Jimmy is feeling good because Chuck, not Chuck, but Howard, is taking responsibility for it, which, like I say, pretty much in his mind might absolve Jimmy of his own uh, part, his own role in that, that situation. So maybe in this next episode, episode two, we'll delve a little bit more into that or we'll see a little bit more of what Jimmy's thinking and what Jimmy's feeling about that whole situation, if we're even going to get into it. Now, if you're interested in watching any of my full-length reactions to this or any of the other shows or movies that I've watched, you can head over to my Patreon page at patreon.com 31mike, and I will leave a link to that in the description of this video. Now let's go ahead and jump into the episode and see just what's going on with Jimmy. Now who is this with the EKG? Is Jimmy in the hospital? It's not in black and white, so we're not back in the future. Oh, wait a minute. This is going to be... Uh, Hector. Hector. Yeah. And this is being done in the dark, so this seems like this must be a little bit of a clandestine check, yeah, check up on him by the cartel. He's no longer in a coma, but he's unresponsive. That's unacceptable. Hmm. Gustavo, he's getting very good care here. There's very little even the best hospitals could do. Might it be different if he was in the care of someplace like Johns Hopkins, perhaps? But in the end, I can think of no better judgment on this man. Uh, yeah, but Gus doesn't want that right now, at least. Isn't this what he deserves? I decide what he deserves. <laughs> Gus would have been better off if... Things had gone differently here. I'm starting down south, office manager interview in Polvadera, and I'm working my way up north to Algodonas. I got a lot of ground to cover. Jimmy, nobody's going to ding you for not having a steady job right this minute. I forget, was he required to get a job by the court or by the bar? You see there, that's Alma, and on the left is Ollie, Mr. Neff's aunt and uncle. They started this company almost 50 years ago. That's a thermofax. It needed a specially coated paper to get an image off one of those babies. Mm -hmm, that's uh -huh. right. Jimmy you know knows about stuff? copiers. Uh. I worked in a mail room, so I talked to a lot of repairmen, a lot. <laughs> this one was a real big seller for Neff. Really put us on the map. That's a 6500 color copier. Hmm. That's a war horse. I mean, yeah, he knows his stuff. This it takes 15 <laughs> seconds to get a printout. I 
worked with one back in Chicago. Hummels. Yes. Those were Alma's. She loved collecting the little things. God rest her soul. Yeah, I knew a lady. Same way. Hmm. Ah, oh, touring the wall of crap, I see. Over at Sandpiper, the, the old lady the at Sand I don't remember her name. had a chance to motivate myself. Mr. Neff, this is James McGill. Oh, just Jimmy's fine. Jimmy, yeah. pleasure. Yeah. Except being a lawyer. Being a lawyer is a salesman. Look, being a lawyer, my job was sales. I was selling to judges. I was selling to juries. Sometimes I was selling to clients to take the best deal from a series of bad options. But every hour of every day, I was convincing, persuading. I was selling. He's selling right now. <laughs> selling himself. Well, thank you for coming down. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime. Yeah, we're going to put our heads together, have a decision in, say, about a week or so. Great. Great to know them. Thank you very much. <laughs> hmm. He's going to go back in and do some more, set, some more selling. Time you spend looking for someone is time I could be out there working for you. And sure, there are salesmen out there with way more experience than me. None of them will have the connection to your machines that I do. None. <laughs> See, he's being a salesman right now. I was down on my hands and knees with my tie over my shoulder and ink-stained hands and a line of assistants out the door, and they're all worried that they're going to lose their job if they don't get their document in the next five minutes. I know better than anyone that the copier, it's the beating heart of any business. <laughs> He's going to sell them. Ka-chunk, ka-chunk, ka-chunk. <laughs> that is a healthy business. Ka-chunk, ka-chunk, ka-chunk. That is a successful business. And that's what we're selling. Yep, they're sold. <laughs> nah, they're sold. <laughs> See that look on his face? He knows. Welcome to the team. <laughs> really? Damn right. Congrats. We'll get you set up with Audrey in HR, fill out your paperwork, and hopefully you'll be all set by the end of the day. <laughs> so just like that, huh? I just come in and do that little song and dance, and I'm in? Hmm. Yeah, right. That's right. That little song and dance. Who, are you out of your mind? <laughs> oh, now he's going to sabotage you. You don't know me. You guys are like a couple of cats. I come and wave a shiny object around. You're like, I want that. <laughs> yeah, he's no sabotaging it now. No background check. I could be a serial killer. I could be a guy who pees in your coffee pot. I could be both. <laughs> Suckers. <laughs> Okay, that was not what I expected. Maybe he just wanted to see if he could sell them. Maybe he doesn't really want a job. He just has to look like he's trying to get a job. Hello, uh, I'm wondering, are you still interviewing for the sales associate position? Hmm. Great. I, mean, I could be there in uh, 20 minutes. I kind of think that's what it is. He has to do a job search, James but he doesn't McGill. want jobs. Of course, if that was the case, why was he trying so hard? Like I say, maybe just the exercise of seeing if he could sell them. Oh, this must be Mike's granddaughter. Papa! Yeah. Look how high he can go. Who I still say is way too old for this period of time. Because by the time of Breaking Bad, she would be, probably be a teenager. Yeah, I can be that. You let her know. Yeah. All right, baby. Time to get you back to your mama. I'm just... Looking for an explanation. Oh, you because of what he did. Patch. Yeah. Walls through my warehouse, interfere with operations, and strong arm my facility manager. <laughs> Why? That's his I'm job. I'm on your books as a security consultant. If I show my face in your warehouse, it makes for a better cover story. Doing what you did, the way you did it, 
raises the threat of exposure. No, it lowers the, way the threat. I see it, it lowers the threat. <laughs> That's what he's saying. Like I said, now there's a face in the name that cashes the check. What's your plan then? Madrigal has eight terminals in the southwest. He's gonna go to each one Down of them. Down seven to go. <laughs> yep. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh. Gus. What kind of a restaurant is that in real life? I know they're just using it for the show, but I'm sure it's something real, unless it was an abandoned building they're just converting for the show. Now is not a good time. I'm in town. I can easily meet wherever it's convenient. Assume this is a secure line. <sighs> hmm. I spoke with your security contractor. <laughs> I explained the situation again, but he's going to keep doing what he's doing. I understand. So I'm just supposed to let him keep stealing my employees' badges. Then I suggest you give the man a badge. <laughs> Gus is on board with whatever Mike wants to do. Chuck left the house to Rebecca and <laughs> Well, he dig it as a land, no house. I agree that it would be the right thing for Jimmy to go through whatever survived and take whatever he wants. I mean, anything with sentimental value. We can set up a time. Did anything survive? The estate can provide a truck and storage for anything he chooses to keep. That's okay. Jimmy doesn't want any of it. Hmm. You sure? I think the garage is pretty intact, except for some water. Okay. He doesn't want it. Thank you. Yeah, the way that Chuck left things. As far as Jimmy's concerned, all that's left is for him to sign this agreement letter. Let me guess. Four thousand? Five. Uh oh. It's what you give when you want to cut someone out of a will but not have it contested. <laughs> Just enough money to show the recipient wasn't forgotten. What else? Well, Chuck left Jimmy a personal letter. Oh. His eyes only. Some final... Words. Howard, thank you for everything that you've done. I know it's been difficult. It's hard on all of us. Well, that's right. Howard paid Chuck. It was it eight million? Two million? I don't remember how many millions, but I guess Rebecca's getting that. It was very nice seeing you, Rebecca. You too. Kim? I just uh had to know, what were you thinking? Hmm. About? Yeah, about what? What were you thinking when you came to Jimmy on the day of his brother's funeral and laid that oh. shit on him? Oh, okay. That Chuck killed himself? What's wrong with you? I thought I owed it to Jimmy to tell him. Did you owe it to Rebecca? You huh. tell her your theory? That Chuck... I guess you just saved that one for Jimmy. Kim. I didn't do it to hurt Jimmy. No, you did it to make yourself feel better. That, uh, that's not what I was trying to do. To make yourself feel better by unloading your guilt. Who cares what it does to Jimmy, right? As long as Howard Hamlin is okay. Kim, I, I don't think that's fair. Fair? Hey, let's let Jimmy dig around the fire-damaged wreck where his brother died screaming. And then let's let him pick up a keepsake or two. That is so, so fair. It is just, I mean, oh, what's this, too, huh, Howard? What's in this? One last screw you, little brother, from beyond the grave? Am I really supposed to do this to him? All right, Kim. What can I do to make it better? Nothing. Nothing, yeah, there's nothing you can do. There is nothing you can do. Just stay away. <laughs> wow. That was a great performance that she just put in there. Not... Kim, the actress, she did a great job on that scene. Hey, I hope you're hungry. About now, way too how much does Jimmy food. respond to this yeah, letter? I can always eat. What's in the letter? Counter or couch? I remember correctly. In, uh, is she going to give it to him? One of the classic movie channels is showing uh, white heat without interruption. The other is showing Jaws 3 <laughs> with commercials. Jaws 3. Wasn't that the 3D one? It is Jaws 3D. Yeah. To be exact. Ah. Uh, 
back. I saw that one in the theater. Pour you something a little less. Oh, she put the letter back down. She didn't give it to him. Go with that. Yeah, how was your day? I just mostly stayed here, trying to get organized. No she pressure tell from about the meeting with Kevin, Howard. I gotta get back on the horse, right? thousand seven hundred and forty dollars is that something they just made up or is that what one of those is actually really worth i'm not available at the moment leave a message oh hey, he's calling mike me Listen, I got he wants mike to you. go get that it's a job i think you're really gonna like this You gonna back me up or what? So he's trying to figure out what Hector would want. Kind of taking the lead on his own here, it sounds like. Where's the rest? I only see five. It's a one time only. Not the way we see it. That's the way it is. Salamancas get six. <laughs> We're not leaving without six. I'm giving the orders. <laughs> yeah, so he's taking charge. <laughs> uh oh. Was that Nacho? Do you want to go? Yep. <laughs> Gonna have a showdown. You heard him. They caved. <laughs> That's what I thought. They're zooming in on Nacho. He looks a little nervous about what's going on here. That's how you do it. We had him pissing their pants. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, oh. Well, that's it for him. <laughs> They're hawk-tying him, too. Yeah, and there ain't nothing Nacho can do about it. I know what you've done. The Salamancas, they do not. Mm. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Gus has it over him. From now on. Hmm. <laughs> Nacho went from bad to worse. Wow. Yeah, Nacho just went from bad to worse, I think. From Hector to Gus. And Gus is in control and is holding that over his head that he knows what Nacho did to, I guess, bring about what happened to Hector. And all he has to do is put the word out there to the Salamancas, and that's it for Nacho. Nacho's not part of the family, like he said at the hospital. He's just a family friend. That letter that Chuck sent to, or not sent, but that letter that Chuck left for Jimmy. What's in that? Is is Jimmy ever going to get that? I'm curious to know what was in that letter. Is it going to be him saying, I'm really sorry how things went. I'm really sorry that it ended this way, or I'm sorry what I said. Just exactly what is he going to say in that letter? And how is Jimmy going to react to being left that $5,000? Like Kim says, 
it's that, that minimum amount to show that he wasn't forgotten, so he can't contest the will, which we know Howard paid Chuck. I don't remember how much it was, $8 million, $4 million, $2 million, I don't remember, but it was millions. So Jimmy might have been thinking he's going to get some of those millions, or at least a nice portion of it, and now he's only going to be getting $5,000. Is he even going to accept that or want that $5,000 from Chuck after the way things ended with the two of them? So it's going to be interesting to see that play out. Now that gnome or that little figurine that Jimmy was just looking up that we saw earlier in the episode at the copier place, are those in real life, are those things really worth that much money? I know there were some gnomes that they were, I think they were painted with radioactive paint or something along those lines back in the 50s maybe and those are supposed to be worth a lot of money if they don't kill you i don't know if they're dangerous to your health or not but i do i have seen other things about those that they're supposed to be worth a whole lot of money maybe this is along the same lines but he called mike and i'm assuming he wants mike to go get that and and then they'll split the proceeds so it's going to be interesting to see how some of these things are going to play out in the upcoming episodes. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any thoughts about this episode, please leave some comments down below. And if you're not already a subscriber to my channel, please go ahead and subscribe. And be sure to hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified when I upload each new episode. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on episode three.